Uh, hello, my noble band of outlaws. Outlaw Samurai coming at you live with a video. And if you're wondering what's going on in the background, I'm watching Aladdin, the original Aladdin. Not the uh, 2019 remake. I might turn this down a little bit while I'm filming. If I can find that. There it is. That damn remote. Okay, okay. Okay, so I made an astonishing discovery as of late. This. Now you might be thinking, Outlaw Samurai, this is just black electrical tape. How is it an ex how is it an incredible discovery, you may ask? Well, if you would believe this is a $50 roll of tape, then yes, it's a, it's electrical tape. I shit you not, this is a $50 roll of tape issued by the Ford Motor Company. And if you wonder how I got Ford Motor Company issued automotive tape, I have resources. <laughs> but in any case, with that in mind, uh... I made an astonishing discovery. Now, you know how I've been complaining about my crane katana being loose in the scabbard. Well, I really have to shake this thing now. And you're probably wondering, I, wrapped, I probably wrapped a whole bunch of tape on the inside of this to get it to do that. Nope. Right there. One little piece was all it took to take a loose as hell sire and make it make that sound again. And, like, as you can see, I have to push it open. Taking care of the rattle quite significantly. And you all remember this. The orchard katana. How it always used to fall out of the sky. How it always used to fall out of the side whenever I turned it over. Well. Now. It doesn't hold. If I had to rate the tightness uh, this holds about maybe 10% less than the crane katana which isn't bad and with this one I actually had to use two pieces but I thought you'd enjoy seeing that if you want to spend $50 on a roll of high quality automotive issue tape so this shit is made to take abuse which means it will easily handle Drawing your sword in and out of the sire. Oh yeah, I found my rings, by the way. But, that's not what I'm going to do. Now, uh... Oh, this is the diamond in the rough scene where Jafar asks the Cave of Wonders. But aside from that, what I've wanted to do is... My, uh, crane katana, it's loose in the suka. The suka is loose on my crane katana. So, being the samurai I am, samurai I am, I am what I am. You, you, you get the reference, you get the reference. Obviously, Popeye and olive oil and Pluto, but still, I am what I am and I am what I am. Now, I'm going to take the Makugi pins out of said sword, and I really don't want to hear Iago bitching and moaning about the lamp while I do this, so I'm going to turn that down. Take the other Makugi pin out, and ever since I found this punchy thing, getting these Makugi pins out have been a hell of a lot easier for me. Get that out. 
Oh, don't want to lose it. Ow. Ow. Fat man plus bending over does not mix, my noble band of outlaws. Put the sire down. Little whack. And you can see how loose this actually is. I mean, this is a $50 sword, so, yeah, you expect to do maintenance on it. And that's what I'm doing. Probably shouldn't have took the guard off for the Suba. I'm going to put the Suba pieces back on, the Sapa and the Suba, so I know where to stop the paint. I might, I might actually uh, tape it all the way up to the Habaki. Don't know. We'll see how it works. I might only have to put tape on one side. We'll check the fit afterwards. Now, let's begin. And if you can still hear it in the background, this is the opening song of Aladdin. I'm actually going to cut it off here. Be careful not to cut my own hand open. Now, that the tape is on the back of the Nakago, we'll see if we can still put the pieces on. Oh, I put them. Well, I can still slide the Habaki on and off without a problem. Suba. This is more for if you're on a budget and you already have a sword but you don't want to spend like 80 bucks well, in most cases 300 to get a brand new suka made. Cheap fix for a cheap poor man. Oh. Oh that fit that is so much better than it was before, at least width wise. It really adds a lot of friction on the inside of this thing. And my Fushira fell off. So I'm going to pause the video here so you don't have to see me go through all that uh, strife with the tape again. Okay, so I decided to scrap the idea of putting the tape on the Nikago itself. So I decided to go with my Saya plan and put a piece of tape on the inside of the Suka. So, and stay. Ah, uh, filming equipment, am I right? Make sure I got the right sepa for the right position. I'm actually tempted to put a piece of tape in here because I know that it's not going to be seen. Because the suka rattles too. 
know what? I'm gonna do that. I mean, it's not gonna be seen in most cases, unless I take the suka off the blade. Nah, it won't work, so I'm just going to scrap that idea. Put the suba. Back on. And the moment of truth. Fushira. Okay, so that did not work. I mean, it does add more friction, but aside from actually making the sword stay put, I'll be right back. Okay, so I tried a different plan. Instead of putting the tape along the edges of the Nakago, I put it in between where the Manuki holes are. Leaving this piece of tape here, Let's see if this makes any difference. At this point, I'm not too confident. Oh. Oh, God. Damn. Well, it definitely does make a bit of difference. Especially, it adds a lot of friction. So my thinking is if I add another piece to the other side of the suka, that should get it to work. This time I'm going to put this piece down a little bit lower. Make sure that's still flat in there. Just a little bit lower. Not too much. Okay, like that. And let's see how it works. Oh. Yeah, I had to push that on there. And it is definitely becoming more solid. And with the Suka, I'm finding that this is like a one-time deal. So we'll flatten that out. And like any good uh, redneck, we'll try, try, and try again. Until we find something that works. Well, that's not going to work, so I'll put that. Well, why is that one piece?
Okay, so this is turning into a lot longer video than I originally anticipated. Mostly because of the fact that I am... Uh, I, I don't want to say I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. So, I'm basically figuring it out as I go along. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm probably, if this video gets into the 20 minute mark, then what I will probably end up doing is pausing it until I figure out how to stop this thing from wiggling. Get that wiggle. And I'm assuming that because of the fact that this is automotive tape, it's going to be waterproof. Which means by doing this, I'm also waterproofing the Nakago. Okay, Doki. Which, if you want to not watch this, I will basically make another like two-minute video explaining what I did. So I don't mean to make these long-ass videos. It's just that I basically do this shit on the fly. So I'm figuring that if I cover this with enough tape, eventually I'm going to get it to stop wiggling. Which, if this does not make this thing stop wiggling, uh, I am basically going to give up on trying to fix the wiggle for a while. Alright, so this is what I got. I've completely... Covered the tape. Covered the tape. <laughs> covered the Nakago in tape. And... While I have this stuff out, I'm going to attempt to fix the Fushira as well. I'm going to just... add a third amount of an absurd amount of tape. And I will be right back again. Okay, I'm back. I have to get a pair of scissors. Big reveal.
Ow. It's like I hurt myself. Sword repair. You're almost guaranteed to hurt yourself. For future reference, that's probably stuck on there good now. Oh yeah, I cannot pull that off, so... That Fusha is stuck on there. Unless I completely dismantle the Suka and then break it. I'd imagine. Alright. We put a shit ton of tape over everything. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it will. But... I'm going to stop this video here because it's already absurdly long enough and I'm going to do the fit together in another one. So, I'm out. Peace.